Hey yo, and what is up, wrestling fans? Thank you so much for checking out Sledgehammer TV today. It is Friday, December the 22nd, 2017, and we are here like we always are to bring you some of the best breaking news in the world of sports entertainment, or how we like to say, pro wrestling. And we are going to do that right here and right now on the newest, fastest rising podcast in all of YouTube, The Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. So, ladies and gentlemen, Let's do it. Alright, wrestling fans, thank you so much for joining me here once again today. My name is Nick Nightmare. This right here is my little buddy, my best friend, and the world heavyweight champion of microphones, Blue the Snowball, and we are here to bring to you part one of the weekend wrestling Update as we are bringing 2017 to a fast and furious end. I feel like this year is going like this. Holy shit, you guys. Where did this year go? I don't know if it's because of this podcast or it's just because of how active I have been all year long. Going to wrestling events, going to live events, going to Eternal Con. It's been a hell of a year and we are going to wrap up this year next weekend because that will be the final weekend of the year and it has prompted everybody to start all their lists all the best ofs and worst ofs and all this stuff everybody's throwing up on youtube on all their dirt sheets and everywhere you look there's a best of something worst bookings of 2017 best superstars best matches that's what we're here to talk about, because the WWE is the most full of shit company in professional wrestling, and I, I don't even want to categorize them as professional wrestling anymore. Let them sit alone in the world of sports entertainment and let all the other organizations do professional wrestling, right? And there is no bigger evidence of this, them being a full of shit company, then looking at this list, I have it up on the big screen over here. They have announced the 25 best matches of the year, according to the WWE. 25 is a big number. I don't know if we're going to go all the way through all of these, but that's why we're here today. I want to talk about this list. It's absolutely ridiculous. There are a plethora of matches that should be on this list. The first thing I've noticed after I perused this list is there is not one match from the Mae Young Classic. And the Mae Young Classic featured at least three, maybe more, but at least three of the best women's matches you will have seen on WWE TV all friggin' year long. And Kyrie Sane is not on this list. Shayna Baszler is not on this list. Santana Garrett, Piper Niven, Tony Storm is not on this list. That is a disgrace. Do you know what woman's match is on this list? Coming in at number 21, Charlotte Flair versus Bailey. Raw Women's Championship match on Monday Night Raw from way back in February. In a theme that is going to continue throughout most of this list, the matches they chose, I most like, I don't remember them. I don't remember them at all. I don't know if it's my brain protecting me from all of the shit that they made me watch this year. But do you remember this said Charlotte Flair versus Bailey for the Raw Women's Championship on February the 13th? Maybe this was the one where Bailey finally won the belt, which was only the 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 first step the first step in the downfall of that character unacceptable for that match to be on there the only other woman's match that is featured on this list let me just scroll down here real quickly just to double check my yeah comes in at number six which is a decent number 
for Asuka versus Ember Moon for the NXT Women's Championship at TakeOver Brooklyn, which I was at, which was fucking fantastic. And it absolutely deserves to be in the top 10 matches of this year. Do you know what other women's match is glaringly absent from this list? In my opinion, anyway, is Asuka versus Nikki Cross. If you're going to throw NXT matches on here, half of these matches don't deserve to be here. I will give them credit on putting a few key NXT matches of note in this list, but they definitely, every one of them should have ranked much higher than they place them on the list. Especially when you want to consider what they put at number one. But we'll get to number one. We're not going to spoil that. We're going to make you guys hang on in anticipation. Because we're going to go, we're not going to go through World 25. Because most of them are garbage. All right. We're just going to go down the list, but we're not going to analyze each and every one. Roman Reigns versus Cesaro came in at number 25. This just happened. This just happened like last week. It was a very good match. Good enough to make a top 25 list of the year. 25 is too big of a number. 25 is too big of a number. They should have did a top 10 or, or a top 5. Now we're down, and let's see what you really thought was the best. 25, having 25 best matches is like a scapegoat. Like, they could just put anything they want, which is essentially what they did. Roman Reigns versus Cesaro. No. Kevin Owens, AJ Styles, Chris Jericho, triple threat for the United States Championship on SmackDown Live. No. Bobby Roode versus Shinsuke Nakamura, NXT Championship match, NXT TakeOver Orlando. Absolutely deserves to be on this list. Should be at least top 15. Considering everything else they decided to put here, that match should definitely be higher than 23. Number 22, John Cena versus AJ Styles versus Bray Wyatt versus Dean Ambrose versus The Miz versus Baron Corbin, which was the Elimination Chamber match this year for SmackDown Live. I don't like this being on this list at all, because first of all, the match was not that great. Second is the only good thing that happened out of that match was Bray Wyatt finally becoming the WWE Heavyweight Champion. But for the third and most important reason why, just like in the case of Bailey, this only launched Bray Wyatt into the abyss. It did not propel him to heights that he deserved to elevate to. It it propelled him down. And it just kept spiraling downward from there. It was like he reached the top only to have everything stripped away from him. And now we can only hope that 2018 is an upward mobility year for Bray Wyatt as he has the perfect foil and the perfect anti character to his which is woken broken matt hardy which we're all very excited about and i can't wait to see what the year holds hopefully they let them do what they want to do and the wwe don't put their grubby little fingers in it too much and and ruin everything 21 like we said was charlotte flair versus bailey no thanks i don't even remember it number 20 we get our first cruiserweight entrant a fatal five-way elimination match from 205 live I guarantee you 100% of the WWE fan base that went to this list today read number 20 and was like, I didn't see that match. You think being at number 20 is going to make me go and watch this match? Absolutely not. A random fatal five-way on 205 Live from February of last year. That's how far back they had to go to find something decent for the Cruiserweights. No. 19. Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship at the Royal Rumble last year. No. Number 18. Definitely deserved to be on this list. I would have put this match definitely top 10, maybe even top 5 for the year. Sanity versus the Undisputed Era versus the Authors of Pain and Roderick Strong at the first ever NXT War Games. That was one of the most fun, most brutal, most wrestling-like matches that we have seen all year on WWE television. Yes, it was not main roster, but it definitely deserves to be much higher than 18. That match was fantastic. Number 17, another Fatal 5-Way. I'm surprised this isn't just a list of Fatal 4 and 5-Ways, because that's all we got all year long anyway, right? Number 17, Finn Balor, Roman Reigns, Samoa Joe, Seth Rollins versus Bray Wyatt. Fatal 5-Way Elimination Match, Extreme Rules. Extreme Rules was not one of the better pay-per-views of the year. I barely even remember this match. A match that I do remember almost in its entirety comes in at number 16, which is Aleister Black versus the Velveteen Dream. 
at NXT TakeOver War Games as well. This is another match that deserves to be much higher than 16 on this list. Definitely a top 10 match, maybe 9 or 8 on my list. This match was a dual star making match. It came out of nowhere. Nobody expected anything from it. Patrick Clark as the Velveteen Dream has only grown leaps and bounds beyond what anybody thought that character's potential would be. Alistair Black has shown him and has earned respect for the Velveteen Dream, as did we. Anybody that watched that match has respect for him now. They don't question the gimmick now. He is a legit superstar. You could take that exact match from War Games between these two guys, put it on a main roster show, Raw, SmackDown, or any of the pay-per-views, even one of the big four, as an opening match, as a mid-card match, wherever you want to feature it, and you will have two bona fide stars when that match was over. That match was fantastic. Definitely deserved to be higher on the list than number 15, Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship at WrestleMania. Get off this list. Uh, nothing that happened with Goldberg should be on a best of anything unless it's best comeback of the year or luckiest man in the world 2017 or, I, I don't know, sob story of the year, charity case of the year. Definitely not match of the year. Definitely not even worthy of being towards the middle. This should have, de if they wanted to put this on the list, this should have been 25 at the very least. No thank you. Number 14, Roman Reigns, again, versus Seth Rollins on a random Monday Night Raw from back in May. Just by giving you that information, do you remember it? We've seen it so many times throughout the year, throughout the last three years, I can't tell any one of those matches apart. I'd have to go back and look at it again, and I don't want to do that because this year was terrible. I don't want to relive this year. Not most of it, anyway. It had its moments, but, geez, this was not one of them. Number 14, we're getting towards the main crux of this list. We're getting towards the heavy hitters. And we got a random Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins match. Followed by number 13, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins versus Cesaro and Sheamus for the Raw Tag Team Championships at No Mercy. This was a good match. This was at the beginnings of this feud where I wasn't nauseated by seeing this foursome every single week. This was a good match. Does it deserve to be at number 13? I don't know. Like I said, given the crop that they have to choose from, or crap, is what I should say, never mind crop. This may be among one of the better things, but to be so high on here, that No Mercy match, I don't think it was that great. It definitely wasn't better than Aleister Black and the Velveteen Dream. That is for sure. Number 12, which should not be on this list at all, Shane McMahon versus AJ at WrestleMania. I'll give it a pass because it has AJ, but that match was not a good match. Shane McMahon is not a superstar that deserves to be smack dab in the middle of the top matches of the year. AJ Styles did the best he could in that match. And he made it an interesting match, but it was not one of the best matches of the year. Again, I will use this as... You know what? We'll even go to a, a different one. I don't want to keep reusing Alistair Black and the Velveteen Dream. But nothing that has come above that so far has beaten that, nor has it been better than the War Games. So, I don't know what the hell they're thinking of. Number 11. Finally, something that I don't have too much bad to say about. The Usos versus The New Day for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships at Battleground. This feud was fantastic throughout the year. We had some high-quality wrestling. As I have said time and time again on this show, the Usos are the best tag team in the world right now. Their heel turn has made them almost untouchable. Everything they say, everything they do just has a certain swag and an attitude about it that just makes them feel right. The Usos just feel right. It's not even whether you like them or you don't, whether they're heel or they're babyface. They are just right. They are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Their performance in the ring has been above average, way beyond what some of these other guys have been doing or year long, so I don't mind this at all. I actually might have put this a little bit higher. Actually, I, I would have probably slotted their kickoff match show for SummerSlam. It was actually 
better than this particular entry that they chose, and I would have taken that and put that definitely much higher on the list, maybe even at number five, maybe even a little higher, because the Usos deserve to be featured as the best of everything, because they are almost one of the sole reasons to stay a fan of the WWE. Number 10, Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins versus The Miz triple threat match from the May 1st episode of Monday Night Raw. Anything with Finn Balor in it has been great up until recent weeks where he's been stuck in this post-Miz feud with his minions in the Miz to rush. But once again, this match was not good enough to stand out or to have anything happen in it that really makes me say, yeah, top 10. Let's start off a top 10 match with this triple threat match that I can barely tell apart from everything else we've seen this year. Give me a break. Give me an even bigger break with number nine, The Big Show versus Braun Strowman. I don't care which date you choose. I don't care if you make up your own Big Show versus Braun Strowman match in WWE 2K18. Put them in a hell in a cell. Go all out. Pull out all the spots. Do everything you can do. Throw Big Show off the cage. Do whatever kind of fantasy scenario you want. Even in your dream scenario. Even in my worst nightmare. There is no reason for the Big Show to be on this list at all. There is not one match he's had with Braun Strowman that was anything more than a than a spot fest. And the fact that he's still in the ring, much like Kane, at this point, and this was back in February, most of these matches they picked were way back in the beginning of the year because the rest of the year just totally sucked. But this match should definitely not be in the top 10. Absolutely unforgivable. Number 8 definitely does deserve to be in the top 10. This deserves to be in the top 5 because this match may have even been better than the War Games. The Authors of Pain versus DIY versus The Revival Triple Threat for the NXT Tag Team Championship at NXT TakeOver Orlando. NXT does it right. NXT builds their superstars right. And NXT's superstars perform big on their big stage, which is TakeOver. And this match was clear evidence of that. Add in the fact that when all would be said and done, we would have that unforgettable moment where Tommaso Ciampa almost took Gargano's head off, effectively disbanding DIY for the near future. And that was an epic moment in the year of pro wrestling for the WWE, I would have put that definitely in the top five. Coming up at seven, the demon Finn Balor, they make sure to make the difference known that, you know, the first time he was on this list, he was just Finn Balor. But this time he was the demon Finn Balor. And he went up against the phenomenal one, AJ Styles at TLC, not too far back. And that was a great match. Definitely not... I I would definitely put this right where it's at. Number seven seems about right. This was a fantastic match between these two guys. They definitely saved that pay-per-view. It wasn't a great pay-per-view overall, but this match alone is the one reason to go back and watch Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. Definitely one of the better matches. Like we talked about earlier, number six, Asuka versus Ember Moon, take over Brooklyn. Absolutely fantastic. We witnessed the rise of Ember Moon without her winning the championship. Even in defeat, Ember Moon got herself over and would continue to do so. She is now the NXT Women's Champion, much deserved, but nobody is ready for Asuka. Don't forget. Number five. Brock Lesnar versus AJ Styles. Definitely not top five. One of AJ Styles' better performances because he did make Brock Lesnar look great. It was an entertaining match. There was not one moment 
during that match where I truly believed AJ Styles was going to beat Brock Lesnar. They are on a mission. They have the initiative in place and they are not going to stray from the plan. And you know what the plan is. It rhymes with Bowman Bames. But this match was definitely not a top five match. I liked this match, but it was not top five from Survivor Series just past... I wouldn't have put it so high. The New Day versus the Usos SmackDown Tag Team Championships from SummerSlam kickoff. Hey, look! (laughs) I didn't even realize that this was actually on the list. Look, see, sometimes they actually are smarter than they make themselves out to be. This match, like I said, was much better than the Usos and the New Day at Battleground. Definitely deserves to be in the top five, like I said. Sitting pretty at number four, and I will agree with that wholeheartedly. It was a great match. If you did not watch the kickoff show, as most people don't, you ruined the night for yourself, and you missed out on a great tag team encounter. It was absolutely fantastic. Coming in at number three as we're hitting the top of this list. I know we said we weren't going to go through them all, but hey, I guess we are. Tyler Bate versus Pete Dunne for the UK Championship at TakeOver Chicago. This was maybe my favorite match all year. I fucking love Pete Dunne. I love Pete Dunne. The minute I seen him in the UK tournament, I immediately was drawn to the Bruiserweight. He is just my style. He's short. He's big. He's like boxy, you know, stocky guy. Arrogant. Takes no nonsense and will knock your teeth right out. I just absolutely was taken by that character. Tyler Bate is the perfect opponent for Pete Dunne. And when you have that scenario, you get these kind of matches. Absolutely fantastic. This if it w- <laughs> they would never put an NXT match at the number one spot for the year. Never. There is no way they would top this list with a match from NXT. But this probably was the match of the year for the WWE. Hands down. Hands down. They surprised the world. And I'm surprised there's not more. Or at least one more from the UK Championship Because that was a great show. It was a fantastic weekend of wrestling. We got guys like Tyler Bate, Pete Dunne, Trent Seven, Mustache Mountain. I friggin' loved everything about it. And I wish they would do more. Tyler Bate, Pete Dunne, she'll be number one. But they would never do that. Coming in at number two. The fatal four-way match for the Universal Championship at SummerSlam, where I was almost asleep. I was almost asleep. I was hanging out at a bar earlier in the day with JD and Justin Labar, and we were hanging out pre-SummerSlam. And by the time I got home and got through the rest of that show, and we got to the fatal four-way, I was half asleep. I was half asleep. I was exhausted. It was a big weekend. We did a lot that weekend. We were at TakeOver Brooklyn. We were at House of Glory Friday night. It was a huge weekend. Huge. And I was exhausted. And I hated this match. I did not like it at all. Because I knew what was to come. And they did not make Samoa Joe look good at all. And I I just... I have no fond memories of the main event of SummerSlam. And the number one match on this list, again, they went all the way back to the beginning of the year. And they selected AJ Styles versus John Cena for the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble. This was a decent match. This was an important match of the year. This was... One of those once-in-a-lifetime dream match scenarios that nobody ever thought they would see. AJ Styles versus John Cena. WWE Championship match at the last year's, at last January's Royal Rumble. We're still in this year. We got a few days left. It's not last year just yet. But number one, over Tyler Bate, 
be done. I don't even think that match was better than half the NXT entrance on this match, on this uh, list of matches. Was AJ Styles, John Cena better than Balor and AJ Styles? I don't think so. I remember it being highly dramatic. I remember it for the ending, but I don't think it was the number one match of the year. I just don't. <sighs> Let's see what else is there. All right. The AJ Styles commented on the number one match with John Cena. And I quote, That rivalry was something people wanted to see and thought would never happen. People knew what they were in store for. Two guys who bring out the best in each other. If you saw me before this match, you'd see my smile on my face because I knew something great was about to happen. It was great. It was great. But the best match by the WWE all year? Johnny Gargano's had better matches than that. And I'm sure he has a lot better matches to come. 2018 almost has no choice than to be better than this. But on the road that they've been on lately, who knows with the WWE. God. That list was pretty much a fluff piece. There was about eight matches with Roman Reigns in it. You know, four matches with John Cena. What do you expect? They're going to fluff it up. They're going to use it to further their agenda. Look how many of the best matches of 2017 Roman was in. A very inaccurate list, if you ask me. There's been so many of them, and most of the guys that I've been watching have been on point with their ranking of some of the matches of this year. I... I'm a man on an island to myself, though, because I have a few favorite moments that I know have not popped up on some people's top lists. And I'm going to go over some of that stuff on the year-end show next weekend. We're going to get into all that stuff and go over what we liked this year, what we thought was the best, what we thought was the worst. Because I know you guys dig that stuff, and you can already let me know how you felt about this year, light up that comment section down below. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow for part two because we are going to talk about Vince McMahon bringing back the XFL. Why some people think that may be a good thing and I'm here to tell you why it may absolutely change nothing at all. And we're going to go over all that on tomorrow's show. So don't miss it because it's going to be great. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. That's all we got. That's all we got. It's a nice quick little story. I wanted to go over this list. We'll go over the rest of the news throughout the weekend. Thank you for joining me. My name is Nick Nightmare. This guy right here, the shiny guy with the beautiful belt around his head is Blue, the snowball microphone. The world heavyweight champion of microphones. This has been the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show right here on Sledgehammer TV. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget to check me out on Twitter at Nick Nightmare. Follow me over there. Follow us on Facebook as well. Join us over there. Become a fan of the page. Watch for anything we're putting up and posting over there. Sometimes I post some wild stuff. Most of the times I'm just posting about the show and you will not miss anything as long as you get your eyes on both the Twitter feed and the Facebook page. Be awesome today. There's a very easy way you can do that. All you got to do to be awesome is click that thumbs up. Like this video. Share it with your friends. Get the word out there about the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. And most importantly, do not forget, if you are not a member of this family, because that's what we are. We are a family here at STV. And I want you to join it. We have only a few days left as we are driving towards five 100 subscribers. We are slowly creeping up there. And I want you guys to help us make it. Become part of the family. Become part of the movement. Get us to 500 before 2018 opens its doors just over a week from now. It can happen. We can do it. All I need is your help. Become one of us and stay with us for a very, very big 2018 coming at you right here on the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. That is going to do it. And we are out of here. And we will see you tomorrow for part two of the Weekend Wrestling Update. This has been the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Thank you so much for watching. I completely just botched that ending. I just forgot my whole entire outro.
<laughs> and I have no idea why. So I'm going to leave you with me giggling at the fact that I just fucked that whole thing up. But if you watch the show, you know how the end's supposed to go, so, so do it for me. Do it yourself this time. Audience participation. And if you don't know what I usually do, tune in tomorrow and you'll see. If I don't, mess it up again. Thank you guys so much. I love you. We're out of here and we will see you tomorrow on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Dig it. <laughs>